welcome to episode 44 of From Then To Now, the DEW 2020 save, where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 all the way up to the modern day. In this episode, we have got our first episode of Superstars of October, meaning there's not long left until we reach the end of this year. We've got two more Saturday Night Main events, one in October and one in December, and then a big Survivor Series in November. I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. If you're new around here, make sure you do hit that thumbs up button and subscribe because less than half of you that watch these videos are subscribed. And you know what? I think we all know that we can do a lot better than that. So without any further ado, for the first time since July, we are in the Tacoma Dome in Washington. We're in the Northwest. I think we can sell it out this time, which we didn't last time. We were only half the half the pop venue was filled. I think this is a sellout because we are hot right now. Let's get into superstars. And ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest is an open challenge match for the International Television Championship. We didn't quite get a full sellout, I think. I think it's 17,000 something for the Tacoma Dome. Which, a little bit sad, but oh well. Still a lot better than we did last time. But Vince McMahon comes out, and yes, it is going to be an open challenge. Cactus Jack comes out. This is going to be a weekly occurrence on Superstars. Cactus Jack will come out and defend the International Television Championship every single episode of TV. It's rare that this, unless the storyline depends on it, it'll be very rare that it goes to pay-per-view or, or ESPN. But this is going to be big every single week. It's a guaranteed segment. And the match itself gets a 62 as Cactus Jack defeats Tatanka in just over 11 minutes with the double arm DDT. They did not click in the slightest, which is a little bit disappointing. But a 62 overall, a 64 for Jack and a 46 for Tatanka. Next up, IRS is chatting backstage and his Repo Man is there. And his Repo Man is excited about teaming again. And IRS just seems a little bit despondent. He's not he's not sold on this tag team yet. It's a 52 rating. as Because they are going to be teaming up later in the show. I think in the main event, actually. Uji Goons, Yoshinara Agawa and Satoshi Kojima defeat the Beverly Brothers when Agawa pins Bo Beverly with the leg hook Saito suplex. 58 for Kojima, 54 for Agawa, a 56 overall. The fact that they, this is these teams had like zero pop when we started with them. I think we have done so well with Fujigun. They are one of my big projects that I'm proud of. But a big victory here, well, not a massive victory, but it is a victory which brings them closer to their goal of tag team glory. Hogan is back. Real American blares out through the Tacoma Dome. The crowd pops. It's in the mid card, yes, because it's a shortish match. But Hulk Hogan picks up the win, pinning John Nord with the big boot. He, so he's fighting for a Fujigun member. He's basically setting his goal clear that he does want to go back for his world title. And he grabs the microphone afterwards. And he starts going on about how... At SummerSlam, he lost the title, and he shouldn't have. He should not have lost that title. Hulk Hogan should still be your WWF World Heavyweight Champion, because the Hulkamania era will live forever. And he gets interrupted by... Ric Flair. Ric Flair comes out... And Ric Flair is the number one contender at the moment. He is the person who's going to be facing Yokozuna at Survivor Series. And he essentially tells Hogan, go to the back of the line. You lost. You lost to Yokozuna. Which Hogan rightly points out, yeah, but you lost to me. Multiple times. I beat you and then we had another go and I beat you again. Why do you get to go jerk back to the front of the queue when I didn't? And Flair talks about how he beat Bret Hart 
the up and coming star twice, once in his hometown. That's how Ric Flair makes the top of the line, because he is the man. And to be the man, you've got to beat the man. Hogan cuts him off again, like, so I'm the man then. Hulk Hogan is the man because he beat the man twice. Uh, basically, they get face to face. We get, a, we get a swarm of road agents coming out because these two are going to be forever rivals. It's as simple as that. Whenever they're in the same vicinity, it's going to almost come to blows. That's my goal with these two for this save. Whenever they're around each other in the card, they're going to get angsty with each other. Even if it doesn't lead to a match. To sh they're forever rivals. Mr. Perfect beats Barry Horowitz in just over 10 minutes, hitting the Perfect Plex after Shawn Michaels hits sweet chin music on Barry Horowitz. It's a 72 for Perfect, a 54 for Horowitz. And essentially, yeah, we're sort of cutting the Barry Horowitz story here. He keeps losing to the horseman. It was a nice little four-week storyline. This is probably where it ends. 72 rating though, good stuff. 75 for perfect. Good to have him back again. And after that we get a Jack Tunney announcement. On Saturday Night Main Event, it'll be an eight-man tag team match. One fall to a finish. Ric Flair will team with Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect, and Lex Luger to take on the team of Yokozuna, Yoshinara Agawa, Satoshi Kojima, and John Nord. And that'll be our main event on Saturday night's main event broadcast. Gets a 62, good stuff. Well, Fatu of the, of the Islanders takes on the Miracle Violence Connection, and it ends in a DQ after... The entire island has come out and stopped beating down on the Miracle Violence Connection. Williams, of course, miles above everyone else. Fatu struggling at the bottom. 71 rating. And they get saved by the smoking guns. So, Steve Williams, Terry Gordy, a bit down, and the guns come out with Slick. And they sort of even up the numbers. They've got chairs or whatever they would have. Their cowboys, what would they have? Whips? No. I can't think of what they'd have. Let me know in the comments down below. What would they have with them? But they come out and they make a save. And, you know, obviously, Gordy and Williams aren't massively fond of them. They don't really accept their help. They sort of shake them off. And they walk off to the back, leaving the guns in the ring and their music playing. 53 rating. IRS and Repo Man come out for their match. And as you've noticed, I have covered the screen here. Because just before the bell rings, it's a match against the Nasty Boys. IRS slams Repo Man in the back of the head. Big elbow to the back of the head, taking him down. He grabs the mic. And he points up to the entrance and says, Repo Man is not worthy of being my partner. I know who my real partner is. And out comes the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. DiBiase is back from his injury, which he stained months ago, just before WrestleMania, which led to the really confusing tag team title scene in the post Mania sequence. But he is back here, gets a 76 for his return. And the match gets a 65. It's not amazing. Brian Nobbs gets a concussion. Of course he does. Because apparently Ted DiBiase can't be in the match without there being an injury. But Ted DiBiase picks the win, hitting Jerry Sags with the diving back elbow drop. It's a 77 for DiBiase. 64 for Nobbs. 56 for IRS. And a 57 for... For Jerry Sags and afterwards, Brian Nobbs got the concussion. We know that, Kevin. No one's to blame, though. And Money Inc. start a beat down on Reaper Man, who's kind of still at ringside, like, what the fuck happened? 
And they beat him down. And he gets saved. By Crush. Now what have these two got in common? Hmm. The big bro. Crush clears the ring. Gets a 90 rating. And that is how the show ends. Gets a 77. Not amazing. Not terrible. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Are you happy to see Ted DiBiase back? What about Hulk Hogan back in the ring and sort of still arguing with Ric Flair? The smoking guns coming out to make a save for the Miracle Violence Connection. Mr. Perfect returned to the ring. Cactus Jack's open challenge stipulation. There's so much stuff which is setting up for the future here. I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you think. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.